Another day in lockdown, but fortunately the arrival of another kit to build. This looks like a bit of fun, nice smiley face there. And this is a EPP model, which should be fairly crash resistant even for me. It's a one meter wingspan, as denoted here. We have our tail feathers and, and rudder. We have a beautiful set of instructions solely in Chinese, but with some, some pictures. We'll see what we can do with that. What it should look like when it's built is as in the photo here, although I doubt if I'll be intercepting any jet aircraft with uh, my model. We have the carbon tube, the fuselage, some thin carbon rod, which I believe is to strengthen the wing. Finally, some control rods for the rudder and elevator. An anonymous bag of bits of uh, laser cut ply, horns and various other things that we will need. This model comes as kit only, so there's no electronics or anything else with it, no servos. From a failed project, I've retrieved this brushless motor. So this is a 2208 13 turn, 1400 kV. Although it specifies here that it should be 2208 2600 kV, I believe this will be adequate. At the moment, it's sporting a six by four propeller. From the same model, I've rescued the four servos, two of which have the necessary Y connection to control the ailerons. Finally, I have some additional pieces which I have 3D printed off of designs from the Thingiverse site. Links, as always, down in the description. These two parts here are for fitting the aileron servos and similarly pieces here to help fit the servos for the elevator and the rudder. We have a neat little box arrangement. This will be glued in place like so to stop the battery flailing around. And finally, two flexible pieces which are going to replace the rubber bands. This is a much neater arrangement and a rather fetching colour, don't you think? These once the wing is on, we'll fit over the carbon spars that will go in these locations here. Let's see if we can decode the Chinese instructions and get this thing put together. The first part of the instructions are to assemble the tail section, the tail plane and the rudder, and that's reinforced by these ply pieces and attached to the carbon fiber tube for the fuselage. If you're curious as to what the actual Chinese instructions are, there is a trick that you can do on your smartphone. Simply go into Google Translate, and I found it better to actually download the Chinese translator. And then simply with your camera, you can aim that at the relevant section of text, and it will translate the Chinese for you. You may have to have a, a couple of goes at it, just get over the section that you want but I find it works really well, and I have a, another video on that subject. I've already been through that process, so I think I know what I'm doing. First thing to do will be to glue the actual rudder to the tailplane, and then put the ply pieces in place. Glue of choice for these days for foam is this Yuhu Pour, specially developed, I think, for expanded polystyrene, as it says, this being EPP trying not to get any in the slot for the ply pieces, making sure that the pieces are well mated together. And with that on a flat surface, just double check that things are at 90 degrees, which they are here. I'm just going to place that to one side and let that set up for a while and skip ahead to the section here that I can start whilst that is drying. For the first part here in diagram number five, we need these two pieces. One is the engine mount, and one is the reinforcement for where the carbon fiber tube goes. Now the astute among you will have noticed that this isn't going to work because there's no way of mounting this directly onto the firewall, if you will. However, thingiverse to the rescue, once again, I simply don't know what I would have done before getting my 3D printer. I would have had to buy one of these or make one out of some aluminium or ply. And that's simply going to screw onto the back of there 
and then onto the motor mount. When looking at the motor mount here, we can see that it's slightly offset. It's nearer to this edge than it is to this. Is it then going to sit like this or the other way up? Once again, your phone or camera comes to the rescue. I've just taken a photograph of the pieces there. And when I enlarge it, I can see that the larger gap is at the top, if you will. So that piece is going to go that way up. Just making sure that that's well mated in there. That will stick there nicely. It's clear how this piece will go. It fits over there. It has two guide holes for the control rods for the elevator and the rudder. And the carbon fibre tube obviously will fit through here. Probably a good idea to use the carbon fibre tube to make sure that that's in the correct place. Before the glue sets up, just insert the carbon fibre. The tail section is complete now. I've put in the plywood pieces and the skid and the carbon tube for the fuselage. Nothing really to comment on here, except that perhaps before you glue the carbon fibre tube, it's a good idea if you're OCD or anally retentive or belt and braces, call it what you will. It's a good idea with carbon fibre to rub it down first with some acetone, then rough up the surface for the, to give the glue something to adhere to, and finally wipe it down with acetone again to remove any of the carbon dust. The next part is item six here, and we have these ply pieces cut out. Now this is the reinforcement for the landing gear. So this piece is sandwiched in between these two. The landing gear will go up inside there. Note, however, that if you're going to install the landing gear, and some people have chosen not to, once you insert the carbon fibre rod and glue that in, there is no way that you're going to be able to remove the landing gear. Well, not without a Dremel cut-off wheel. Once they are glued together, there are two additional pieces, top and bottom, like so the whole of it, which will then be in place like this. I'll go ahead and do that. The last part of this section was to fit the wing supporting dowels. So I've just pushed those in and glued them. Again, cleaning them first with acetone and roughening them up a little. Now it's time to fit the undercarriage. I'm going to be using the undercarriage. The supplied method it's just these little brass, brass coloured ferrules, which it suggests you glue on. Now I've elected to put those on the inside and put a collet on the outside. I've had problems with similar undercarriage before where this wheel can bind against the angle of the piano wire here and cause binding and difficult to, to steer. So that is a much better arrangement in my view. That now will simply fit in there, ready for passing in the carbon fibre tube as it is in the next diagram. Before fitting the tube, it's important to put this small piece here, which is identified as 502 on the diagram. And it says to glue it, but I'm not going to glue it until I've put the control rods through uh, to see how that lines up and to make sure things aren't, aren't binding. The other important measurement is that the length of the carbon spar from the edge of the tails to the body should be 29 centimetres. I'll go ahead and do that now. It's just encountered the landing gear there, which I'm going to have to spread apart a little for the tube to pass through. You can see it just just passing through there. And now we're looking for our 29 centimeters and I've just overshot that a little so I need to back that out some. That's now on the 29. I'm not going to glue that in place at this moment in time. Obviously we will need to make sure that everything is at, at 90 degrees. That's quite solid even without gluing it in. We can set that to one side. Next we have the wing assembly. I'll go ahead and do that now 
and then mention any items that are of especial importance. Prepared now for the wing assembly, there are four pieces of carbon to be used. These long carbon rods, one fits above and one below in the prepared slots. Then there are two other smaller pieces which you have to cut your own slot for and glue those in place. That will be last. Importantly, you cannot do this flat. The wing has some three degrees of dihedral. What I'm going to do then, always good to keep some of these old lead acid batteries around just for holding things in place. Now I can push on this end. Although they have put the carbon spar in first, I can't quite see how that works because it's going to want to bend in the, in the middle and I think it will just cause a bigger issue. What I'm going to do instead to make sure that the pieces are lined up just with my metal ruler here, make sure that the two slots are, are, are lined up and raising one end of the wing off, I will just slide this battery underneath until I achieve the correct angle and then apply some pressure on the other end with another battery. One other thing to note, I was wrong earlier on when I said the part on the fuselage was called 502. 502 is in fact a type of cyanoacrylate adhesive. In fact, this type, what it is saying is to glue that in place with cyanoacrylate and similarly to use that for the carbon spars. So I'm going to use the u hoot pour to join the two wings together and then super glue the carbon fiber in place. With the wings stuck together now, you can clearly see the small dihedral angle there. Now it's time to fit the spar, the first carbon rod. What I think I will do is to tack the center down first and hit that with some accelerator. And then with that fixed in place, I'll just push the rod into place and dribble some sino over the top of it. First, pushing the rod right down as far as I can get it there. That's down in the bottom of the slot, no problem. Generous application of Sino there. And just hitting it now with some accelerator. That'll keep that well in place whilst I tack down the rest of it. To fit the control horns for the ailerons, you need to cut a small slot into the aileron itself. The servo horns are going to be pointing outboard. We're going to need one centimeter. So if I put my square on the edge of the aileron there and come up to a centimeter, I know it's going to be on this line here. The control surface is some 30 millimeters. Therefore, my center for the cut is going to be there. All that I need to do now is to carefully with the knife here, just open that out. Now that should push through. followed by its little keeper pushed down on the outside. It's not necessary to, to glue that, it just simply clicks into place and that is now very solid indeed. Repeat that on the other side and fit the servos. The next step is to fit the control horns for the rudder and the elevator. They're indicated on the diagram but in a rather vague fashion. What I've elected to do is to put the control rods temporarily in place and that way I can actually fit the end of the control arm over the end there and get a much better idea of whereabouts on the rudder that needs to go. Clearly we don't want it too close to the bottom of the rudder. Equally we don't want this bend here to be too much as it will cause binding. Mark the position of this one. Things are a little simpler for the elevator control. We can use the line here to determine the position for the elevator control. 
essentially will line this edge up with the gap in the elevator and then cut the hole in the appropriate fashion there. Let's get that in place. I've installed the servos in the wings and just tacked lightly the cables along the wing using the Yuhu Paw. The 3D printed mounts make a really neat finish, I think. And the additional bonus is that as the servos are screwed in, they could be changed out relatively easily rather than having the servo glued directly into the wing. The control rods need to be cut to length. Similarly, on the fuselage, the 3D printed mounts enable the servo to be changed, the servo not being glued directly to the foam. These slots here will need to be cut out a little deeper. The push rod is, is binding somewhat in, in there. With hindsight, it would have been easier to do that before sticking this piece on the back. And probably the weapon of choice would be an old uh, broken hacksaw blade just to, to go through there. But I'm going to take that rod out and open those out on, on both sides. You can see the arrangement of the control rods here. They may need shortening as well. Again, similar for the elevator. The next job will be to get the radio and the motor installed. I'm going to be using this receiver with a name that cannot be mentioned right now. It's a six channel receiver. We're only going to be using four. And I have a, a bunch of these left over from a previous life when I was using a Futaba transmitter. Now that I'm using this iRange 4-in-1 module, I can set it up to bind to that receiver, and I have a separate video on that subject. These are a really neat idea. I am now able, for example, to buy some of the El Cheapo FlySky compatible modules, which previously wouldn't work because my transmitter is running the EU LBT protocol, but this will bind to almost anything. Well, here she is looking pretty awesome, I think, even if I do say so myself, which I'll have to, there's nobody else here. The centre of gravity is indicated on the plan there, and not really any surprise, it's directly over the main spar on this line here. It has a very slightly nose-down attitude, which is perfect. They say that a, a tail-heavy plane only flies once. We should be okay. Let's show you the control surfaces now. I'll switch on the transmitter. We have our right aileron and left. There's no throws indicated on the plans, so we'll put them at maximum and then put rates at maybe 75 and 50%. Elevator and rudder. And a little blip on the throttle. The next thing I'm going to do is a full throttle check and see what the current draw is. A goodly amount of thrust there at only 7.3 amps peak. A miserly 7.3 amps peak. So on the 1500 milliampere hour cell, that should tootle around for a goodly amount of time. Can't wait for this lockdown situation to stop, so I can go and give it a whirl.